Hello, one day is Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. This is the week. Yeah, charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. By the way, if you want to attend these shows live, I would live, I would love to have you. Go to DaveLearner.com slash webinar. Register even if the link is old. Uh, sometimes on Thursdays, I will remember to put the uh, sign up on the front page. <laughs> Go to your Dave Keller show today. It precludes using the same jokes on the same day. Yeah, yeah, I know. I need some new material. It's like I need to get out more. When I get out, I get new material. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put that up on my website tomorrow. I was on the final bar today. All right, what we're we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I'll have a plethora to say about that. Uh, I got an email from one of you guys. They said uh, I like when you use the word plethora. It, it it means a lot. Your questions on trading, you could uh, fire away all you want on those. Starting now, if you don't mind, hold off till we get to the charts and for your stock picks. And if you don't mind, also for your benefit ask about one stock at a time and hit return that way i know which ones i did and did not cover so we'll talk about crypto too we'll get to crypto first and then we'll get the stocks so what are we going to focus on well uh last minute i remember to ask for requests and uh, by the way you can always send me requests if you're watching on youtube dave landry.com dave landry.com slash contact and you can send those requests to me there and if you have a comment or something, leave them down below. And I'll look at those too. And if it's something that you want me to cover, I'll uh, I'll take a look at those too. So anyway, last minute request. Somebody wanted to know about trading breakouts, why it's just uh, crypto that I trade them in. And there's actually some other markets at other times, and I'll flesh all that out. Speaking of crypto, we're going to get into um, shiz coins pretty heavily this week. I was watching a little bit of last week's show right before a we went live tonight and i realized there's a few things that i want to flesh out and i also noticed that as i'm going through the charts a lot of these things are coming up so we'll spend a little more time this week on the crypto charts and you know keep in mind it's not it's not just the crypto markets are markets right so if there's some other market next week or next month or next year that heats up i'm going to be all over it okay and that's the only reason i'm kind of crypto crazy right now and in fact, it's actually a bit of a bummer. If you go in and look at some of the breakout stuff, such as the 230 EMA breakout, I passed over all that stuff because crypto had cooled off for so long, I kind of forgot about it. And then I just kind of by accident started looking, you know, looking at, uh, uh, I always look at Bitcoin itself, but I didn't really pay a lot of attention to the to the altcoins, the shiz coins. And I noticed that they were really beginning to take off and I was a little late to the game but it's really paying off lately and i'll show you that in just one second uh, i want to talk a little bit about intraday trading which i've been talking about quite a bit lately maybe not so much and tonight but uh is it worth it and uh, no not today <laughs> it was a really ugly day and uh, i want to flesh that out a little bit too and uh 10 percent tfm update we have a buy imminent so or i say imminent it's gonna be two weeks at least but hey one week at a time right all right, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading. Or as I'll to sum it up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. <laughs> Let's talk about the intraday trading, trend trading experiment. Uh, intraday trading is not my bread and butter. And it might not even be my forte, but I've done it on and off forever, uh, especially early on in my trading career. And and then in between a lot of uh, like opening gap reversals and daily pattern type of setups and things like that. But lately I've been getting really active just to just kind of to see what see how it would go. And uh, I think initially it went really well, and then uh, the wheels kind of came off the bus a little bit in more recent times. And I'll show you all that in just one second. In fact, let's take a look at that now. Now, before we get into it, a couple things that I want to to bring up if i could kind of bottle this up so to speak i would be more than happy to share with you and and for the most part i'm just doing breakouts and i'm trying to avoid fake outs and i am looking at the daily pattern to see if there's something there and i'm kind of trying to flesh out a few things and a little bit experimenting here and there and 
it's it's interesting like something like dave landry stocks like momentum stocks or whatever could actually do quite well and maybe do better than than etfs and as i flesh all this out I, i'll be happy to share it with you i don't want this to be something like oh i did this i did that it's like oh whatever dave no, there's a lot that's going to come out of this. And there's a lot of psychology that's actually coming out of this. And I'm going to explain that in a few seconds. But anyway, let's take a look at the last week. So on that day there, we kind of took off, came back in, kind of worked our way higher, and then we imploded. So I lost money on that day. Now, one reason I want to show you the intraday charts is if we end up with a route type of day, that's when I can print money. And as I'm kind of talking through this, and as I write almost every day in my uh, morning pages, which I wake up early and write three handwritten pages every day, and then I end up writing 10 or 12 or 20 pages on trading in general, but I like to get the, the random thoughts out of my head, start my day. And, and by the way, I saw, I think it was Stutz, psychologist who I was talking about recently, uh, with he wrote the tools, and I forget the other guy's name he wrote it with, uh, my apologies. But anyway, he talked about the the writing as a way to get what's tap into your sun, subconscious. Because when when I was watching the the special, uh, I think the special is called Stutz, and he said something about subconscious, like, "Oh, here we go again. You got to meditate to try to get there." And I never had much success with meditating and stuff like that. But I was surprised when he said you can tap into your subconscious through writing. And I'm like, oh man, I do that already. I was pretty excited about that. So big fan of waking up and doing the writing. And it's actually one of the things that gets me out of bed. The other thing that gets me out of bed lately, it reminds me of 1999. So it's probably coming to an end, but I can't wait to wake up and see how much money I made in the shiz coins. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of 1999, which when that was really bad. Uh, degraded audio, close any on internet. Okay. okay. Is the audio okay? I'm getting a, a flag that my audio is kind of getting wonky. Okay. Um, now, on this day here, you can see we had a little bit of a rally, and then it kind of grinded lower all day. And I actually did okay. Now, Brian is asking, what do you mean by a route day? I think it's I think it's spelled, I need to double check this, but I think it's spelled R-O-U-T. A route day starts at one end and ends at the other. And it goes straight up or straight down. And it's the same thing for the most part is what I call a holy grail day. If you have a route day, you could just buy stuff that's gone up and sell or sell short stuff that's going down. And you absolutely print money. I need to learn how to wait to trade more and more in those route days. And as I was experimenting with a lot of this stuff a while back, if you go in and watch the if you look at the quick clips on my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel is at Dave Landry. Go to YouTube and look for at Dave Landry and you can find it. And I talked a lot about looking looking for a lot of different things on a daily chart to help me get to that Holy Grail day. So maybe take a look at that. And that's probably something I probably need to revisit a little bit more. And as these route days occurs, I'll, I'll let you know. So this day kind of just grinded higher and then it looked like it was going to implode and then it took off towards the end of the day. And I don't remember exactly what I did on that day, but I, I do remember thinking that this thing's just grinding higher. It really can't get anywhere. And when I saw it implode, I got to thinking, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chase it lower. It ended up chasing my own tail. Now that day there was a crazy day. Okay. It was kind of ludicrous. That was a Fed day. So I did very little all morning, shut down everything. And then when the Fed announced I tried not to get sucked into everything. I actually, after one or two gyrations, I set alerts and I went to lunch. And when the alerts to the upside triggered after this, this bar where it went up and down a lot, I came back in and started buying with both this. And I didn't print money, but I did okay for the day. Now, today I got absolutely annihilated. So the market, Sold off initially, it looked like an opening gap reversal. Then it took off, then it went sideways, then it took off, then it imploded, and then it took off again. So it looked like it was going to, after the morning fake out, it was going to be a gap and go. And then it ran out of steam and looked like it was going to implode and then come down and close the gap. So I kind of ended up chasing it up and down. 
and I really ate it today. <laughs> now, there's a few things that I did that helped this, and there's a few ex extraneous or external forces that were kind of working against me. I had a deadline I'd actually forgotten about. I got a panicky call from Sky Charts. It's like, you know, we, we don't have your charts yet. We're going on, you know, going live in a couple hours. You're supposed to have those yesterday. <laughs> you know? So I had to scramble to get some charts together. And I saw the market beginning to implode and, and we're getting ready to go live. And it's like, so I got a little aggressive on the short side and no excuses. I mean, I own it. Okay. And, and it said, that's the thing is like, it's amazing how many different forces sometimes, or I'm not going to say conspiring against you, but are out there that can affect your trading. And that's one thing I've been talking about a lot with just trading in general and trading the core methodology is extraneous influences. And I think in the back of my head, I'd, I just wanted to get as short as possible before the show because I knew I wouldn't have time because I was going to a show. So as I've been saying quite a bit, saying yes to one thing is saying no to something else. And I'll talk about that. And just one second. So here, we, I thought I had a slide on this. So I got aggressive on the implosion. I was under deadline, like I just said. And the other thing I did was I stepped on the gas, okay? So initially, this was just in one account that I was doing this stuff, my, one of my more active accounts. And then I started evolving other accounts to try to step on the gas a little bit because I'm Dave Landry, right? <laughs> and today, one thing I didn't do was I didn't adjust for volatility i ended up with some big position sizes which didn't seem that big to me on the surface but the volatility was was much greater than i realized so it's it's a work in progress and we'll see how it goes i thought it'd be cool to actually i know i'm a nerd so this is a chart of when we started this this whole thing and you could see it looked like it had a lot, a lot of promise until things came unglued. Now, look here. you got one, two, three, four, five. This is like, uh, let's see how many days is this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's almost two weeks. That's two weeks of being underwater, okay? So if you're trying to pull money out the market, it's two weeks underwater. Now, this would be okay if it wasn't much of a drawdown, just kind of flat. That's, that's expected. But you don't want to see such big drawdowns when you're trading shorter term like this the intraday stuff you need to have the potential for unlimited gains unfortunately you don't have that on an intraday basis and you also have the potential to to lose a lot i was talking with a client who does a lot of this stuff but he also does the position stuff and he's really good at the position stuff and He's real disciplined with it. He takes, not that I'm the grand poobah or anything, he does his own stuff too, but he takes every recommendation that I recommend and he follows it pretty much to a T. He gives it a little bit of discretion when it comes time to exit and it ends up hanging on sometimes a little bit longer. And sometimes it really pays off and sometimes he loses a little bit more. But for the most part, he's really following the methodology. And he got creamed today much worse than I did and uh, much earlier than I did too. And he, at the end of the day, he was looking at some of his position trades that were up like $40,000. And he's like, Dave, is this worth it? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I think if you waited for the route days, and I think when when everything is 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 going swimmingly, absolutely worth it. But in the meantime, Maybe not so much. And we could probably find a pattern. This is why I'm doing this. And this is why I'm making it public, you know, as painful as it is on a day like today. So it'll force me to, to go in and work on this and figure out, okay, did the market become choppy during a period, a certain period of time? And were there certain things I would do in that were more conducive? So again, there's nothing magical or hidden in this. And obviously a day like today, obviously nothing magical at all. Now, a lot of my thoughts from last week I carried over. Uh, stress, mental, and physical, and it's a, it's, it's a lot. I mean, there's days where I do fairly well, you know, four figures, five figures, or whatever, and I feel pretty good about it, And but I'm pretty stressed out, and it's like it feels like I, I lost that amount of money. So it, it can kind of wear on you. Now, when you say yes to something, like I said earlier, you're saying no to something else. So it's like I, I'm kind of like, uh, like I missed the stock chart show two weeks ago because I was so busy with the markets, and 
there's a lot of other deadlines that are that I'm pushing myself to the wire, causing more and more stress. So I've got to be cognizant of that. I think there's a potential to chase your own tail, negative spiral, outsmart the market. Like this afternoon, I knew the market was going to implode. I just felt it. But I didn't think it was going to go straight back up after it imploded. <laughs> so I got that part right. And, you know, you got to be careful. Unless it's a route day where it just goes from one end to the other, you got to be really, really careful. Um, and as I often say, we're only wired to make so many decisions. And if you under stress, right? And, and that's why inner center ER doctors have a high burnout rate, as I preach, and air traffic controllers. Uh, watch Pushing 10, not a great movie, but kind of interesting insight if it's real, uh, realistic to air traffic controllers. Now, one of you guys, I think it was Craig or, or John, I forget who, said something about fractal learning, you know, markets and psychology. And and yeah, my tape reading has become pretty cool and that's been kind of fun, you know? It's like, I knew the market was gonna sell off. I just didn't know it was gonna go right back up, <laughs> you know? There's, there's plenty of chances to be wrong. But one thing that is coming out of it, kind of a hidden benefit, is, as I think I said last week, I'm going through these psychological cycles over a period of, of, of hours or sometimes even minutes, which would take normally six weeks or eight weeks or eight months to go through. And, and my writing has gotten a lot better as far as the, the, the projects I'm working on such as that I've, I've been working on a book which is coming out of my morning writings and the psychology of that is going to be the crux of the book and it just reminds me of so many different things that that are happening on a fractal basis so and, and that'll make more sense as i publish some of this stuff tape reading like i said i'm, I'm beginning to get a feel for things which is kind of fun um you know but do i really want to be chained to a to a market all day it's like um my wife had an appointment yesterday and she asked if I wanted to go with her and normally I would go and it's like, um, but it's fed day, <laughs> you know? And so anyway, less would be more for sure. You know, I need to figure out a way to back off on that a little bit. All right, let's see what's coming in. In our days when you crawl up like a cocktail shrimp, been there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing too it's like uh and, and you know you don't want to you don't want to miss the forest for the trees you know like my client said earlier he had he had open positions and stocks that he's held forever that that have gone up you know with forty thousand dollar gains and stuff and then he's messing around doing this stuff and he also has um, other professional responsibilities sort of like myself i suppose but a lot more than me <laughs> to uh to keep up with so yeah you have to be cognizant of it all so we'll see yeah and then of course yeah yeah uh, brian's pointing out or, or somebody just pointed out that uh of course the market then imploded again in the after hours so yeah it could be a little frustrating one thing i've been kind of noodling with a little bit and i think this is going to be a good chapter in in the book that i'm working on and it's gonna it's gonna be a work in progress for a long time. The original work in progress was about four or five years, so that's that's gonna morph into this, and it's gonna take a while to get done. But I'm working really hard on it. Uh, not doing a day though, because I'm watching the stupid screen <laughs> more than I should. And by the way, one thing you do want to do is instead of watching the screen all day, once you kind of see how things are setting up, put alerts in. One one danger that I have with alerts is I get alert, I get excited, and I immediately buy or sell short or whatever. You want to put the alert in to alert you that the market's moving and then just take a deep breath and that, that goes down to the neurology and all, down to the amygdala. Let everything slow down a bit and make sure you really want to get in. And if not, maybe set a little bit higher alert or possibly decide on where you want to get in and put in a stop order on that. Getting back to what I was saying, one thing I kind of thought about, which would go nicely into a, a, a book on technical analysis, is some things that we need to kind of remind ourselves of on on why we are technical traders and, and why keep it simple and why you need technical analysis and why technical analysis works. And, and 
my format or my form of technical analysis is performance-based investing. And it's akin to your fantasy football team. You don't go out and pick the shittiest players you can find. You pick the the best players that you could afford, I guess. Would be, I guess you're giving bu- budget. I've never played. If I got in something like that, I, it, w- it would obsess me. And it would... <laughs> So I don't do it. I, I know myself the, the way I'm very obsessive. It's a sickness, but that's another story altogether. Two beer minimum on that, two drink minimum. But you want the best. And the same thing if you're running a, con- a company, you've got three employees and, and two are busting their butt and one sitting on theirs. You're going to get rid of the person that's sitting on their butt and keep the other two and not just the opposite like many people do in the markets. The other thing is the buy and hold is preached universally. And it just doesn't work, believe it or not. And think of think of like 2008, and this is this is all a bunch of stuff in my head. But 2008, the market's hitting 13-year lows, and I think I wrote about this in the Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks. But the market's hitting 13-year lows, and and let's say you invested over a decade earlier, and then all of a sudden, junior's ready to go to college, or you're ready to retire. It's like you might have to work a few more years, or junior might have to go. To junior college, and nothing wrong with junior college. I'm I have a public education. <laughs> that explains a lot, doesn't it? Anyway, I was on my way to the gym. Don't laugh. I actually go every day now, believe it or not. And I heard a commercial on the radio that kind of really struck a chord. And they said, if you're like me, you don't want to lose 30% of your IRA or 401k. And he was talking about stocks, okay? He goes, that's why I invest in gold and you should too. So I thought it'd be kind of cool, I know I'm a nerd, to go in and take a look at some historic moves and gold. And this one really caught my eye. Now, in case anybody's wondering, this is a continuous contract, which does have some anomalies in it. And the contango could make it a little bit worse than it it actually was. But I did check the spot gold and I think the spot goal was in the was uh, mid 60s or something. So there's not a huge discrepancy between the charts. And there's no discrepancy on the timeline. So 71% over 20 years, or just to keep it safe, 60 something percent over 20 years. So if you invested in gold back in the early 80s or late 70s, whenever that first bar is, I guess 1980, somewhere in that time. And you held it for 20 years, you would have lost 60 to 70 percent of your money. Okay, so gold is not a safe investment. Stocks are not a safe investment. Shiz coins are not a safe investment. There are no safe investments. But Dave, sometimes you say you hold stocks two years. Yeah, because they're moving in my favor. You have to have some sort of performance-based metric on when you're going to exit. Now for the S&P 500, as you'll see in a second as I preach, 10% is a pretty good performance-based metric, some place where you might wanna think about getting out. If you're trading something wild and crazy like a shiz coin, 10% can happen in in 10 minutes. So your stops are gonna have to be a little wider there. And if you're trading some of these crazy stocks like I do, like EH, which we're long now, I'm pretty sure to stop as much more than 10%. All right. I want to do a brief market timing update, and then we'll get to your questions currently. And and we have a question this week I want to cover. So what's interesting is the, the TFM 10% system. I never really thought about the lag that it would have to get you back into the market, but that's actually a good thing. And I do have other stuff that I look at, but that's actually a good thing because it'll keep you from getting in possibly too early. Now, of course, on a whipsaw filter, it might not work out so well, but keep in mind the designer's intent for this was to avoid the diaper change moments. And that's an Ian McCaff that he's saying. And He's no longer with us, unfortunately. He was a, he was a great guy. <laughs> I was thinking yesterday, I was drinking my cup of coffee. Like, like he was, he didn't drink a lot of beer, but he drank a lot of coffee, smoked a lot of cigarettes. I'm thinking he's my canary in the coal mine. You know, <laughs> if 
if he goes, I better start taking care of myself. It's like, oh shit, he went. Uh, anyway, poor, yeah, you love you, man. Anyway, uh, he would give these unbelievable presentations and just very entertaining. And, and he used the term diaper change, which we all thought was kind of interesting and funny. And that's when a market just absolutely implodes. And what I thought was kind of cool about this little system and, and it was kind of my original intent was how do I get you out of the market? How do I get me out of the market before it implodes? And, and well, getting back to the kind of a dovetails in with the technical analysis apologetics, if a market is going to drop 50%, it's going to drop 10% first, right? Not that you always want to get in and out on a 10% drop, but it gives you kind of a guideline, especially in something like the S&P 500, because that, that's a pretty good round number meets the volatility of the S&P historically. And by getting out when you are below the buy line and below the buy line just right here, it's it's 90% of the 50-week close. There's your parameters. This is the weekly chart, okay? Dave Keller was actually surprised to see me use a weekly chart because he knows I do a lot of crazy shorter term stuff but anyway it will the the exit is when you get a close below the buy line and a close below the 50 week moving average so your your sell signal the first sell signal for the bear market was here we did have a buy in between that i didn't notice because my line was thick and i remember looking back at the market and says oh we're we're getting getting close to a buy and then I'm like, oh, we came all the way back to the moving average and the market looks like it's beginning to implode. So one thing I didn't notice, and I've said this a hundred times, I apologize for repeating it, but just in case somebody says, hey, D, wasn't that a buy? Like, yeah, it was, but it, the original intention of the system was to buy on strength, not weakness. So if you do see a buy signal and it's a down week like this one and looking pretty ugly and coming right back to the moving average, even if technically it's still a buy, you might want to wait one more week or at the least wait for some sort of trigger for it to rally back up i thought about putting that in the system but i don't want to curve fit things this has been out for i don't know how many years a few years i want to leave the original system intact and so in, in case or whatever wait let me rewind i want to leave the original system intact so 10 years from now we can look at this thing and see if it fails miserably or continues to work quite nicely as it is, has done historically by the way, the last week I said it only works when there's bear markets and it, it just works much better versus buy and hold, okay? So what happens is you get out at roughly a 10% loss, depending on what the moving average is, and then the market may continue to implode. So this is kind of your diaper change indicator back here. So 25 to 26 or something percent would be how much more money you would have lost and this is not going to the lows i probably should come up with a that's a great idea i should come up with a an indicator down here to show you how much you would lose to the lows that would be even better i'm glad i thought of that i'll see what the programmers can do and we'll call it diaper change uh we'll put ian's name in there <laughs> but anyway the reason i program or had this program that should say like this is i want to show you how what's the worst it would get after that 10%? Like how much further past the 10% did the market actually go in total? Now, technically these numbers are quite bigger, would be quite bigger if you were measuring the percentage from the from the drop, from the point they drop down. And that's just a weird way percentages work. And like I said last week, NASDAQ lost 50% of its value, then it lost 50% again in 2000. So hopefully that makes some sense. But anyway, it has a lot of lag. And then as I've been saying for the past three or four or five, six weeks, it's starting to catch up with price. And today we have a close above the buy line and a close above the 50 week moving average. Now it's still going to take two lows above the 50 week moving average. So it's going to take at least two more weeks, not tomorrow, not the next Friday, but maybe the next Friday we'll have a buy with this. And I don't do a whole lot of longer term trend following, like moving funds around or whatever. But what I what I will do if I do get a buy signal two weeks from now, and depending on how things go, maybe a little bit earlier than that, but we'll see. I will put, I have some leftover college funds for my girls. I might put them back into the market. I take them out the market 
when this thing triggers a cell and then I put them back in eventually. And sometimes I might put them in like a, a sector fund or something, but I try not to trade their their uh, their money too much. Anyway, so you need two lows. If this is a moving average, you need two lows above the moving average. That's what I've called what I now call Landry light. Okay. I posted this in the Facebook group, but too late, I'm sure. I was wondering if you'd elaborate on your buy on EH. Yes, we'll get to that. That would be great. Okay. Yeah, thank you, John. I'll be happy to do that. I want something to happen with the market during the day. I just leave my screen for a minute. <laughs> yeah, if you want something to happen to the market during the day, leave the screen. Yeah, there, no kidding, huh? And that's why I like to uh, use alerts, but 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 one one of my flaws is because i'm type a i guess is that that alert makes me immediately want to place a trade you know as opposed to just alerting me that i want to pay attention all right so i was a little late getting out the request but again you can always send me requests ahead of time and maybe i'll put up a post request for next week that's a great idea maybe i should do that on fridays what do you all, what do you all want to talk about next week just keep adding to it and I'll see what I can do. I actually painted this mailbox, by the way. This is back when I lived in the country. And um, we went to sell a house. <laughs> dad, dad, you got to get rid of that mailbox. It's like, all right, so I put up a black one. I don't know whatever happened to this one. Okay, I did get asked one question. Yeah, that's what I was experimenting with flames. I went through a little phase working with flames. My daughter's really good. She could. She started uh, when she was like 10 years old or eight years old or whatever. Whenever I did this, she started doing some really good flames, much better than mine. Okay, I forgot to ask earlier, and this is me asking what you guys want to talk about in Facebook. By the way, the Facebook group we have a great bunch. You have to be at least a gold member of DaveLander.com. That that keeps the riffraff out. I'm, I'm half kidding. All joking aside, I, I want to see I want to see people with little skin in the game, and who are who are not 100% committed to only my methodology, but but have a, an interest in trend following, and methodology similar to mine. And of course, if we all did everything the same, it wouldn't be any fun. It, it is cool to see what everybody's doing. So the question is, breakout strategies and why, for the most part, you don't trade them except for crypto. Okay. Well, crypto is isn't the exception, and I'll I'll flesh that out. So the question is, the trade breakouts or not? The reason, as a general statement, I'm not a breakout trader is because more often than not, breakouts tend to fail, unless you're in the right place at the right time, like the turtles were. Okay. I would never be shot on Friday, especially after having my ass handed to me doing this little experiment, right? I'm glad my wife doesn't watch these shows. <laughs> so, but and without being shot on Friday, not a whole lot of turtles made it past that program. Mate, it sounds like they made it. They didn't. They didn't mate. <laughs> made it after that program. And that's probably because they were in the right place at the right time, not to take anything away from them. But they they saw to hit it right. And uh, one thing I was thinking about earlier, because I was looking for a book in my office. And uh, I noticed the way of the turtle sitting on the shelf. And in there, at some point, I, I think it was Faith that wrote that book. I like that book from Faith and I like his other book, uh, Trading from the Gut. But at some point, Dennis and Eckert or, or somebody that was noodling with the numbers actually figured out that the way they were trading with the leverage, they were they were this far away from blowing up. And they immediately scaled back everybody. So that's kind of an interesting, the rest of the story type of thing with the turtles. Now, keep in mind, there's nothing special about crypto except that it's on fire once again. And like I said earlier, I missed the, the early run here, but if you get a nice extended momentum run, then sometimes these things can go on for quite some time. And I think it's kind of just getting started. I hope it's kind of just getting started, but we'll see. Whenever you're waking up, can't wait to see what you made. Eh, usually that's the, 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 
clock has started ticking. Not to mix metaphors, but the the you better have a chair ready because the music's getting ready to quit. So anything inefficient, okay, and especially doing great momentum runs, shiz coins now, okay. Like stocks in 1999, that was the other time in my career that I distinctly remember where I couldn't wake up, couldn't wait to wake up and see what I made overnight. Can be worth trading. And as I've said ad nauseum, I do have one client that has paid for two down payments on houses by taking my my momentum list, my Landry list, and just staying in the top stocks all day or two or three stocks. I don't, I don't remember exactly how he did it. And I've done similar things before where things are really hot. And that's kind of a fun thing to do. It's kind of a cool thing to do, but you gotta be in the right market for that to happen. And maybe the markets are improving, so we'll get there. We'll see. Now on an intraday basis, you might not have time to wait for a perfect setup. So you, you tend to trade breakouts a little bit more on intraday basis but ideally you want to see something with like a bigger picture pattern behind you like a market breaking out on a daily chart and like Dave you said breakouts fail yeah but you might get enough intraday you might get that pop to get your profit profit target up, target out right to the close and then it implodes after the close or the next day or whatever so it and even intraday you're gonna have a lot of fake outs and so it's like you want to try to figure out whether or not a trend is developing or whether or not it's just another fake out. And that's another one of those things that, believe me, I'm noodling with. But ideally, like I've talked about before, something like a Russian doll where you've got a nice pullback setup coming into a day, and then you go in and you trade it intraday. How many days have you seen some of the stocks in our portfolio over the years, especially take off and then come back in and then eventually take off again, thank God. But maybe if you were kind of taking that Russian doll approach, like I've talked about before, and you could get that on my YouTube channel or on my website, you'll you could you could have that big fractal pattern behind you, and then that that intraday pop is enough to go in, get your piece, trail that stop intraday, exit market on close, and then yeah, watch it implode the next day. But you got to be really careful if you are even if you are trading intraday, obviously. It, you have to watch for these these multiple fake outs and breakouts, okay? And I'll show you a few of those. Or when the market is in a route, okay? If it's just going straight up, you just buy stuff that's going up. And crypto's going straight up right now, so you just buy stuff that's going up, right? With a heavy dose of money management, don't put a whole lot in to begin with, take some partial profits, and then trail a stock. Now, by the way, buy it. B technically that's a breakout pattern. Okay, that's IPOs now. IPOs, what are IPOs? IPOs tend to be more inefficient. Okay, and there's a few caveats that go with that pattern. You need pretty good range for the week to make sure you've got a decent setup. Ideally, you want it more than five dollars a share, but less than thirty dollars is the new high end on that. And that's kind of like a the less than five dollars. It could be kind of crappy. I find don't they don't trade cleanly. But when you get into the somewhere between five and thirty dollar range and you get that nice buy a D coming off a nice weekly range, sometimes those can work really, really great as everybody dog piles in and then you're taking profits and trailing the stop and and again having that chair ready for when the music stops. But buy a D is a breakout type of pattern. Uh I'm just kind of thinking out loud now. A first thrust. And sometimes maybe even a bow tie where you just get a little bit, or especially a first thrust, where you just get a little bit of a pullback. Remember, with a first thrust, we're not waiting for that big, deep pullback. We're just looking for a thrust from lows and the first little pullback. So technically, technically, that's a little bit of a breakout type of pattern, too. All right, so the buy B, like I said, this is one we talked about last week, which tech, technically might not be an IPO and was less than $5 a share. So it had two strikes against it in my book. But I didn't know that it wasn't an IPO, and I saw you guys talking about it, and I said, well, what the hell? And um, so you could see, based on the day one rule, you want to buy at a five-day closing high, provided that day one did, does not set the high for the week. You can go and watch last week's presentation and the presentation before that on stock charts, which is also my website for more on that. By the way, I think if you become a free member 
you have a bunch of bunch of bunch of bunch of videos all organized for you in one space. If you become a paid member, a gold member, then you have access to Facebook, but then you have an access to a plethora of courses on so there'd be something covering via B and a bunch of other stuff. And then all the paid courses are unlocked over time too. And those are just a, are a lot more comprehensive on things. So anyway, I went in and looked and saw uh, one of the one of the better days in there, and that was on the 12th. And I was just kind of looking at what really moved in the lab. You really took off on that day, so you could see that it kind of had a fake out here. The first thing it did, if I can get rid of that thing on the bottom. Oh, I guess I can't get rid of it. But the first thing it did was it kind of imploded, and then it's like, aha, it's made a reversal. Let's not get too excited just yet. It took off, came back in. Okay, another fake out. So fake out, fake out, fake out. And then this looked like it was a real deal when it finally started breaking out. So you could see I went in and picked up probably a thousand shares on this. And then it took off. It had a nice little ride. I took profits a little early. I only took 25 cents off, I think, if memory serves. Yeah, 25 cents. So that's 100 bucks. And then I rose to the close on the remainder. And that was a pretty... That was a decent trade on the remainder altogether. What's that? Uh, 75 cents, 500 shares, better than poking the eye. So yeah, I will do a little breakout stuff intraday, but I try to figure out how to do that even less, okay? What moving average or indicator do you use to determine a route? I have an indicator, just hang on a second, let me go get it. So I use this this big blue arrow, and this helps me to see. I don't know if it'll fit in the camera. So if the market it's pretty dusty. So if the market is going straight up, I just I hold this up to the screen, and that's a route day. Okay, that's a route. That's a route day up. It might more, make more sense this way. This is a route day up, and this is a route day down. Any questions? Yeah, that's it. My big blue arrow. <laughs> this is a vintage blue arrow. So somebody was doing this long before me. Look at that. It's nice. I've been dying to dig that out. It's all. <laughs> so yeah, you need the big blue arrow. You know, it's it's uh, it's not rocket science. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's uh, talk about crypto, and then we'll jump to the live crypto charts. Crypto's still hot. Again, for how long? Every morning, I'm like, I don't feel like getting up. Like, ooh, crypto. <laughs> Get out of bed. So this was from last week, and like I said, I was just buying stuff that's going up. And the, the red line is where I bought. The green line is the IPT. This is uh, humans or heart. And once you get that IPT, and again, because I'm not spending a lot of time studying the volatility of these things because they're all volatile, I'm just getting in and flipping out at a 20% gain. So, and I'm not putting a lot of money in them either, believe it or not, uh, or believe it. Uh, so like in a case like this, $1,000, okay? And then I'm flipping out half at a 20% gain, so that's 100 bucks in my pocket okay and then i let them go for a free roll and if they keep on going I, i'll just trail that stop higher and try to hang on as long as possible and possibly survive a few corrections so look right here what is that that's a tko and that's one thing that i wanted to mention is that the if if the momentum slows down a little bit i'll be i would go back mostly to trading the core methodology in this and and by the way, it's not about the crypto. And I think I said this earlier, it's about a market that's moving. And that's what we do. We find markets that move move and jump on or figure out a place to jump on with a heavy dose of money management. So the IPT is 20% above the entry. That's it. I just one point to my calculator. And then I said it. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting. And I didn't have time to grab all of them from last week, but this one was a pretty good move. 
So since last week, you can see it's up another 38%, knock on wood, stalling out a little bit in here. But you can see we entered way back here, we, me, and then I flipped out half here and so far so good. And we'll take a look at the, the open ones in my portfolio in just one second. So like I said last week, you when you're playing this momentum game, this RS game, so to speak, you want to sort by the percent change. And that's that's relative strength, not a relative strength indicator, although you probably could. I knew somebody back in the day had an RSI or something. They would sort things by RSI. That's fine. But I just like to look at the day over day percentage change. And usually I try to look at everyone that's positive. But usually lately there's been so many going down the list and i'll show you that in real time in a few seconds that by the time i get halfway down the list i've already bought five or six of them and before you know it i'm out of money so keep it small i mean i've known some people who put so much money in these things and you know i was looking at one that i bought it's like it's a it's a fractional share of pictures of of digital pictures of something i'm going like what the hell is this crap <laughs> you know and some may be plausible longer term like this knock of some kind of game you play or whatever i don't know I have no idea anyway so you start by percent change and you buy the strong stuff so uh yeah that's pretty much it so let's let's jump into crypto and after watching last week's presentation i think there's a lot of things i could I can flesh out. All right, so let's take a look at my portfolio, just stuff I'm keeping an eye on. The ones in blue are stuff that caught my eye. The ones in I forgot my I've forgotten my old flagging systems, but the ones in green I'm free rolling on. And then the ones in orange, I am not free rolling on their open position. So let's take a look at some of these real quick. So PBX, I think I got in this one, I want to say yesterday or day before. And I bought it because it was going up. Okay. Now, like I said last week, if they have a whole lot of long tails, sometimes that uh, uh, signifies that they're liquid. So just kind of look at the chart first, obviously. This RNDR. I was in and out this one a couple times and gave up on IPTs. And then this time you could see I bought it as it was making new highs, 20% higher again, okay? And then flipping out, or not flipping out, I'm sorry, holding on, okay? So you can see that's been a pretty good run. This was the humans we talked about. Now, this was a pretty big knockout here. So I am giving them lots and lots of room on this on this particular one because i think i've tripled what i put in or at least double and a half i did put out like a stupid order like at a quadruple or something to peel off a little bit more and that's one thing that i haven't figured out yet is you know part of me is thinking okay you got in this thing and you you own um tens of thousands of shares, or in some cases, millions of shares or whatever, or tokens, whatever you want to call them. You probably don't because it's 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 not in your pocket, right? It's in it's on the exchange. So it probably doesn't exist. But who cares? As long as as long as this exchange doesn't go bust and you're making money off the deal. But anyway, um, you know, part of my fantasy with some of this stuff is is I'll have a, a million tokens or a hundred million tokens or whatever the case may be. And this thing, when these things really do take off. And but the reality is, I probably shouldn't get too greedy and I probably should peel more and more off as they continue to roll higher. So, this one you can see uh, enter, hit the IPT, came back in, it's bounced around a little bit. Like I said last week on Seoul, which we'll talk about now, I'm surprised I haven't given up on this one yet because usually I'm not that patient. And I think the only reason I haven't given up on it is it's in a different account where I, they don't have all these crazy pairs on, uh, I think that's Coinbase. I think I have this in Coinbase. And they don't have all these crazy pairs. So every time I see something I like better, there's nothing to flip into it. And might as well just hang on and see what happens. Now, this was one I got in yesterday, and it's kind of hard. You kind of have to close your eyes and buy. And let me tell you this. 
sometimes they come right back in and sometimes you hate yourself for doing this but if they're just kind of going straight up a lot of times they can go 20 percent more okay so in this case shot up came back in and you can see i went underwater a little bit after getting in and then it's kind of it hasn't done much yet okay INJ, and we'll get we'll take a look at we'll see if we can find anything live too. INJ again, you know, just buying as it's going up. Okay. Hit the IPT and so far so good on that one. APT, you know what these guys do? I have no idea. They probably sell pictures of cats, digital pictures of cats or something. I don't know. But you can see, you know, bought it was going up, hit the IPT, kind of chop it around a little bit. Naka. This is uh, one that does games. I can kind of wrap my head around that a little bit. I'm not sure why the token goes up, though. Maybe you guys can explain it to me. Maybe you have to buy tokens to play the game. I don't know. But you can see I bought it, I think, as it was rallying out of this pullback. So the, the TFM stuff works, okay? Two pullbacks, TKOs, things like that. And right now, just buy the ones that are going up. So here's one that has not hit the IPT yet, but look what happened, okay? It came pretty damn close. Now, I don't know if it came close at two in the morning while I was sleeping or what, but that would have been kind of nice to see it kind of getting near that IPT. So I don't have a strategy in place for near misses just yet, but that would be a bummer that it almost, almost got my profit out and then it came back in. So that would be a bummer, obviously. Ava or Yava, I don't know how you say that. So this one's not really taking off just yet. I'm sort of losing patience with it already. Usually I preach patience, but with these things, it's they're like a bus. You know, go find another one if it's not working. Dash is one that did test my patience a little bit. A couple days in this one, maybe three or four days in, but so far so good. I'm just gonna let it run and see what happens. Bitcoin itself, let's take a look at that. Bitcoin looks good in here. I was asked about this in the final bar. And I'm bullish on Bitcoin now. The only thing that's got me a little concerned is we've kind of lost a little steam in here. We're just kind of consolidating. So I sure would like to see it break out and keep on keeping on. All right, let's take a look at the, now you sort of by a percent change. Now, let me just show you this right here. This is down 37% overnight. This is the animal you're dealing with. So don't put a shit ton of money into these shit coins, okay? Or shiz coins, as I'm trying to call them now. So I don't, I'm trying to see if stock charts will let me use the word shiz coins. See, this one looks okay. It's already tailed off though, a little bit, okay? So maybe as it's making new highs, you you know, back here or something would have been a time to get in. I don't know. Um, I would see what else there is out there. This looks okay, but you see these long tails? That's kind of a, a sign that it could be not very liquid so i'd be careful something like that this one i sort of got excited about it first and then i saw all these long tails on it and one thing i haven't been doing a whole lot of by the way is i have been looking for overhead supply and a lot of those other those technical things i'll look at just because they've been going so far and so fast so this is a newer one let's see if we can figure out what's going on here yeah, and see, like these, just super, look look at this. I wonder if that's a real tick, if I can get to it. It was up, uh, you know, what, a thousand percent or something. I don't know if that's real or not, but okay, what's going on here? All right, we got to get to, did I go back in time? Why is that one up? Okay, I just totally hosed my charts. Oh, here we go, okay. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, yeah, this looks kind of interesting. So you can see it's starting to break out, break away from the moving average. That's not that's a not bad. I'll put a I'll put a flag on that one. Okay, so this one's up seven percent, but it looks like it's still in a pretty serious downtrend. Nothing to get excited about there for sure. This one, you can see all these long tails in here. It's probably kind of thin. And you can look at how thick and thin they are by looking at the the little the little bid bid ass spread thing, which broker I think they all have that. 
So let's just speed at the pace here. Is there any ones that you guys want me to pull up or look at or anything? And they do they do kind of wax and wane. It's, it seems like you can't get enough of them, and then it's like they'd start pulling back a little bit. And I don't know how long this is going to be sustainable. Obviously, if I did, you'd, you'd never see my fat ass again, right? This looks pretty good, this dash. Oh, I'm, I'm long dash. No wonder why it looks good. <laughs> You should put all your kids' college funds in this one. But that looks pretty good, right? Uh, it's making new highs. It's at the top of the candle, looking pretty good. There you go, come on. Right there, it's all I want. And then if you wanna keep on keeping on, I'm, I'm okay with that too. All right, nobody wants to talk about any individual ones. Well, again, the point is, this is just the market that's going crazy. This one looks kind of interesting. And I want to show you that trading is trading, no matter what it is. Uh, there's, I, I hate to beat him up, but I'm gonna. <laughs> I got on somebody's newsletter, somebody I actually respect, you know, and he's been poo poo in Bitcoin, and he's been saying, let's get like a monthly chart in, if I can get it to work, you know. He's like uh, at four thousand. Ah, Bitcoin is garbage. Ah, it's fake. It's made up, you know. 5,000, 10,000, same thing, 20,000, you know, and then it drops down. <laughs> See, I told you, I told you. Then it goes up to 70 something thousand. Keeps saying it's crap, and then it drops, tells you it's crap again. But hey, you know, if you're a trader, this is a monthly chart, okay? You mean to tell me as a trader, you can't make money in a market that looks like that? Okay, hang it up. I mean, you know, <laughs> go find something else to do. Jeez, look at that. That's amazing. Look at that. Look at that trend. It's huge. So we could be, you know, everyone's wanting to know if this is a real deal. I don't know. I'm a trend follower, right? Some say a trend following moron, but looks like we're trying to rally off the lows in here. Looks like we could get going. Let's take a look at a weekly chart. See, weekly looks pretty damn good. Oh, what do we have in a weekly? Anybody? One, bar one, bar two. This is a 2.30 EMA breakout, okay? Now, you have to wait for this bar to complete. But as long as this bar completes and the lows above the moving average, then your buy would be above this high plus a little wiggle room, let's say 24, 24 7 round number. So if it if this does not hit after this week is done, 24 7 would be a longer term buy. So somebody, let's put an alert there. I'll just put a line in the chart. And then we'll we'll see what happens. Okay. Let's put it right around, let's go 25,000. 25, 24, 24, seven, how about that? 24, come on, 24, let's put it right. 24, seven, close enough, okay? So let's see what happens. We'll watch this each week. Let's make this a different color so I don't think I have a trade on. Something unusual. About cyan and it work. Okay, what moving average indicates use determined route? Okay, we already talked about that. I posted in the Facebook group, but I'm too late, I'm sure. I was wondering if you could elaborate on your buy on EH. Okay, we can do that now. Okay. Okay, I was wondering if you could elaborate on your buy on EH. I see a gap down in December, December, December. I don't see it. A gap down in December. I don't see a gap in December, John. A gap down in December. I see a gap down in December and resistance March, December, gap down. I don't, I don't see any gaps. Where do we get that? Where do we get in this? We just got in this with recently, right? Um, where did I get it? Um, it has an empty IPT. I know that. So I don't see a gap down in December, and resistance December, March. I don't see any resistance either. <clears throat> the only thing that 
I wanted to talk about with this one. Oh, here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm personally long from 15, 1353. So yeah, somewhere in here I got long. I don't know exactly the trigger on the service. If somebody has a spreadsheet from that'd be great. The other thing I did want to mention here is we did pull back below this prior little breakout. And usually I don't like those type of charts, but the HV is 189, which is ridiculous. So it should be able, and, and, and also the, the run from, from here to here is uh, 200% or something, okay? So I figured it was okay to go after a deep pullback like that. Would freak fall within the same thought process? So why or why not? Okay, the only thing I'm not seeing, John, is I'm not seeing your um, the gap problems, but if, you, if, if, if it's not too much trouble, mark up the chart and post it in Facebook, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up there. But I'm just seeing a stock that just took off, pulled back a little bit, and looks fantastic. When you get a stock like EH, and, and Nine would probably be a little bit better example, because Nine has so much structure to it. This is one we're long. And it's high HV, but it's high HV with trend and structure. I think it's worth going after a stock like that. Would Freak fall within the context, F-R-E-Q? Yes, that looks pretty good. Um, but the problem with Freak is, oh, you said uh, there's a, the problem with Freak, and I saw this one in my scans, it's got this huge gap. I know it's way back in time, but sometimes markets have bad memories. And then as we zoom in a little bit more, you've got overhead supply right here to overcome, and then a little bit, you can kind of call it overhead supply, even though it's kind of a downtrend to deal with. So yeah, initially when when you said this, it's like, wow, that looks fantastic. Because look, you got the trend, you got the structure, and you got the pullback. Now, this might be worth an intraday trade. You know, maybe if it you see it breaking out above today's high tomorrow and it takes off, it might be worth a shot if it's if it has enough volume, the intraday trade, because you've got the trend and the pullback and the reversions of the mean, the whole nine yards behind you. But longer term, a little overhead, and then you got more overhead, and then much, much longer term, you got some really bad memories here. You know, somebody somebody's still holding this stock from the from this area here and looking to get out the gap. It was a while ago, 2021. 20, All right. E H. Yeah, I don't see I really don't see a gap. I don't see anything horrible in this in this chart on the EH. I mean, there's little overhead supply way back here. Um but that's sort of behind all the trading in here. So I don't know. I don't, I'm not seeing as much. A little bit over here. I hear you. But if we got there, it would be um, close to a double. So yeah, I'm not sure what you're, maybe, oh, this gap here? I can't even see that gap. But I, I guess it's bigger if you, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, that's not a horrible gap. You know, if you have a gap within the setup, no, unless it's, um, a commodity stock. Now, also, this is a Chinese stock, so you might have to be a little bit more lenient when it comes to something like a gap. Okay. Hopefully, I answered the question. We can certainly pick it up later. Okay. Let's do a quick market analysis. And while I'm doing that, if you guys want to ask about individual stocks, feel free to start. So now, major MIGs. And let's get the Okay, um, S&P 500 up a percent and a half today. You look at the chart, it looked like it just, it just went straight up. I, obviously, as I showed you earlier, it did anything but. <laughs> but you can see we now have a golden cross in the work. This works. There's nothing magical about, magical about these longer term moving average crossings, but they can help to keep you on the right side of the market. And it's the magnitude of what happens as I preach after the crossing or any type of trend indicator for instance let's take a look at like let's just put in a 30 ema
I know I have these on charts. I don't know why I have to redo it every time. You know, let's take a look at like a weekly chart. Okay, so you got a weekly chart. So you got a crossing of the 30 EMA. Well, you got a pretty big implosion afterwards. No guarantee it'll do that, but you can see, you know, once you start getting some Landry lights on the downside on a weekly chart, for the most part, the market headed lower. Now you're starting to get some upside Landry lights. So whatever trend indicator you're looking at, focus on the magnitude of what happens versus a mechanical system in and of itself. All right, NASDAQ. NASDAQ set the world on fire today. Look at that. Look at that trade. It's huge. Up 3% and a quarter. Nice little gap there. Okay. Nicely above two days of Landry Light above the 200 day moving average. Looking pretty good. Like I've been saying at nauseum, these indices have been in the process, not an event. It has it wasn't an event this time of bottoming out for a long time. And the longer it takes the bottom, the better to bottom, the better the rally off of the bottom structure you'll have. This is a complex head and shoulders bottom for those keeping score. But all you need to know is it's starting to go up, okay? That's a rusty. Gold corrected a little bit today. You could use correction. This looks like what I call a double top knockout. It could actually use a little bit more knockout move. That might be worth a shot, okay? And individual issues on pullbacks might be worth a shot. Their energies, I'm beginning to worry about energies a little bit. We might be close to sticking a fork in them, okay? We've got a possible triple top in the works. We could have a bow tie to the downside soon. Now, I still own energy stock nine, okay? I'm not going to exit it unless I stop out. And I, I'm a firm believer in just follow each or see each position to its fruition. And you do that with a with a stop. And sometimes you might have an energy stock correct, even though the whole market is rolling over, the whole energy market, and then it might come back with a vengeance. So a lot of areas, non-durables, durables, looking pretty good in here. There's automotive. Uh, food's not so much, but most areas, financial's doing pretty good. Look at that, look at that, okay? Take a look at real estate, drugs, kind of losing steam. Now, keep in mind, these stocks that that were strong while the overall market was weak will likely become weak and other stocks will pick up the torch. So drugs are weakening, but biotech's beginning to wake up. Multi-month highs today, kind of wide and loose, but certainly improving. Manufacturing doing pretty good, okay? Pay attention to the bow tie proper order in all these areas, okay? 10 greater than 20, 20 greater than 30, okay? If you have the ACP platform, Plot the proper order. Look at MNC going straight up. Okay. Well, the economy, the economy is bad. Well, I don't know. I don't care. The material construction stocks are going straight up. Why is that? I don't know. That's why we use technical analysis. Okay. <laughs> Leisure's been on fire, as you can see, pretty much straight up in there. So on pullbacks, we might start seeing some setups. Transports, not really excited about transports because they're wide and loose but look at that they're not too far from all-time highs a little resistance to overcome software has been doing fantastic look at that okay nice little proper order to the upside semiconductors bam winning okay multi-month highs that's looking pretty damn good on pullbacks we should see a plethora of stocks there the crux of the methodology the core methodology is pullbacks right so you're not seeing a whole lot of setups other than some real speculative issues and the service and that's because the market has to pull back for us to get set ups. Finally, retail doing pretty good. Look at that big gap there. Looking pretty damn good. Could you rig up the SPY 30 minute chart again and forecast which unfolding for tomorrow? Well, I uh, have no idea. Uh, we'll have to wait to see what tomorrow brings. So he's saying, look at a 30 minute and see what's unfolding. I don't know. I mean, We'll have to see what tomorrow brings. Now, one thing that sometimes happens is after a big day, even though this was a tricky day, right? But after a big day in one direction, the market tends to chop around. So if we look at, let's get a clean chart on this if we can. Uh, control five. So 
the one thing I've noodled with a little bit and I just kind of got lost is 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 trying to figure out like a tailor day rhythm, you know, buy day, sell day, sell short day, you know, but anytime you try to get into cycles before you know it, you get confused really fast. Even Taylor seemed confused. I've tried I've been trying to read his book here and there, and it's pretty confusing. But I kind of get what he's saying. Like sometimes you get a trend day and then you get a chop day and then you get a trend day. So I don't know. Um, there's nothing that tells me we're going up or down tomorrow on that. So we just have to wait and see what's happening tomorrow. The the general trend is up. We are getting overbought. Okay. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX is is beginning to get a little concerning or concerned about the market. So we could see a correction. So you can see the VIX is starting to get a little stretched. Where's my clothes? Right. Clothes is purple. So we're not we're not 10% away from the moving average right now, but we're getting there. So if this VIX starts dropping again, starts getting a little stretched, then that would concern me that we could see a correction soon. Okay. I would I would tomorrow is like a damned if you do, damned if you don't day because we're overbought. If you don't buy overbought, it's going to become even more overbought. If you buy overbought, it's going to sell off because it's overbought. So tomorrow is going to be a tricky day. No stocks, everything exploding higher, no pullbacks yet. Yeah, no setups. It, it has, as soon as the, the individual sectors start pulling back, you know, maybe like metals and mining and stuff like that, we could start seeing stocks. Okay, PALT is a TKO, P-A-L-T. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, decent volume, no, kind of kind of a little light on the volume, so I'd be careful with that. Longer term, you can see it's kind of a thin stock. But yeah, it's improving. Um, I'd actually like to see a little bit more knockout base. See, this is like a 400% run. What is that? Oh, it's only 263. That's a, that's a lot, okay? So you're getting there. I'd like to see a little bit more knockout type of move on that. But yeah, good eye on that one. Who gave me that one? John, good eye. High five. High five for you, John. <laughs> You'll like the big blue arrow, huh? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have to dust that thing off. <laughs> that was the score of the century. You found me a big blue arrow. All right, any more uh, any more individual stocks you guys want to talk about? Well, while we're on impasse, I'd like to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate, as always, you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, Dave Landry, DaveLandry.com, easy for me, slash contact. If you're in a Facebook group, just bring it up there and we'll noodle with it. And um, within reason, you can private message me there too. If there's something you, that you want to get my attention to, especially if it's something that you want to keep private, I have no problem with that. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you guys and girls tomorrow on Facebook and may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.